Hi, I'm Brooke Mabry, a member of the professional learning team at NWEA. Thanks for tuning in to the second video in our series, Strengthening Learning Teams in the Virtual World. In today's video, we're going to be talking about a topic so important right now. It's curating your digital toolkit. And what I want to share with you today is the blog at NWEA called Teach, Learn, Grow, where you can find invaluable resources to support you as you're currently facing COVID-19 school closures. So let me jump right in with our learning targets and success criteria. Uh, today, we're aiming to build your digital toolkit by helping you curate content from the Teach, Learn, Grow blog in WEA. How can we monitor uh, the accomplishment of this learning target? So we have three success criteria today. By the end of this session, I want you to be able to access the blog online. I want you to be able to use the tags and categories to search for your desired content. And I want you to have some strategies for organizing and managing the digital tools that you curate um, so that you can access them easier in the future when you're ready to go back to those. So I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen and we're going to take a look at our blog. I'd like to start by sharing that our blog is based on articles written by um, internal experts at NWEA and also uh, external uh, writers, including uh, former and current teachers of the year from across the United States. Uh, NWEA is actually a proud supporter of the Teacher of the Year program that's run by the Council of Chief State School Officers, or CCSSO, and that's coordinated by the State Departments of Education. Uh, this is one of the most important ways that we express our mission of partnering to help all kids learn, and it's a way that we can connect with teachers to inform our work every day. So on this blog, you're gonna find uh, articles that are written um, by thought leaders across the education industry and particularly in areas that are supportive of teachers doing their work better. So to access this blog, if you go to nwea.org and if you scroll down the home page, you're going to see a link uh, to the blog uh, with a picture. And any page that you're on at nwea.org, if you scroll to the bottom, there's always a hyperlink to the blog post. Since we're here, I'm going to go ahead and click on that link. And what you'll see um, pop up first are our latest posts. And as the time calls for at the moment, you'll see that a lot of our latest posts are dedicated to school closures and COVID-19. I want to call out uh, one of the most important pieces that you can access on this blog. This is a post um, about the impact, the potential impact of school closures on student achievement. Uh, this was written by Beth, our Executive Vice President of Research at NWEA. And in this blog post, she shares research on seasonal learning and summer learning loss that can help us understand um, the landscape and insights into to what we can plan for, for the potential impact of closures on student achievement uh, across these school closures. I want to call out a couple pieces here. If you scroll to the bottom of this blog post, NWEA is hosting a webinar on April 22nd to explore the possible effects of school closures on student learning. If you scroll to the to the uh, bottom of this page, you can click the register now button and you'll be taken to a webinar registration page. And if you can't make it on that day, you can register to, to receive a link to the on demand recording. Um, we have a short video at the bottom of this post that highlights uh, the, the research that we have that's forecasting potential learning loss. And this is information that we hope that you'll use as you start to plan and think forward about how we can really come together as an educational um, landscape to support all of the different aspects of, of what we're, we're facing. Look for future posts that uh, make recommendations specific to different roles uh, for supporting school closure issues. I want to point your attention to a couple of other posts as well. 
We also have a post that uh, was recently published from Elizabeth, who is our accessibility research scientist at NWEA, and her focus is really on how we support students with disabilities during school closures. And she shares some information that we can all take away around how we really start to look at the guidance around supporting students and start to apply those in our regular practice as we support students during school closure time. We also have um, one of our Teachers of the Year um, program recipients represented. Uh, Natalie, who is a former Teacher of the Year from Virginia, has recently written an article about three digital tools that she loves and that she's especially loving right now that her school is closed. In this article, she highlights not only three of those tools, um, how she uses it, what her, how her students use it, why she loves it. She also hyperlinks posts that she's previously written. In 2017, if you read uh, through her second post, you'll notice that uh, she wrote a, a post on personalized learning. And uh, this is relevant now, which is uh, so much of what we're doing in education, which is really trying to find ways to personalize for students and connect with them through digital platforms. And Natalie has written a, a post that we think is very valuable again um, and timely for today. And we link uh, through that particular blog post. Take us back out to that home page. We also have a um, shout out to our social media manager, Joe, who wrote a post for us on 16 free digital resources for reading, math, and map growth to use at home for free um, during the COVID-19 school closures. And of course, this is a curated list where we provide links and descriptions about um, what we're sharing and an opportunity for you to click on those links to check those out for yourself. I recently released a post around the blog series um, or the YouTube series that you're attending right now. We've posted that on our blog. And so we highlighted, if you missed the first series, we were focusing on empowering students uh, to be independent learners. And um, we offered a series of four webinars in our first um, run. And in this blog post, we describe what each of those webinars are. So if you missed any of those, come in and check out this blog and be sure to uh, check out our other videos on our channel. So beyond looking at our homepage with our latest posts, we do have a categories feature. So as I mentioned a minute ago, we highlight teacher voices. So if you'd like to see those posts that are written by those uh, current and former teachers of the year, if you uh, select the, the, all ca the categories, drop down menu and select teacher voices, we're gonna filter for any posts that have been tagged with the teacher voice category so that you can come in here and look specifically for those posts written by teachers. We also have tagged the school closure support. So most of the posts that you saw on our homepage and our latest uh, blog posts were dedicated to the school closures and support. But as we go through um, this period, we are going to continue to uh, tag these and allow you to search them later. So you'll see that we have a number of additional categories. Classroom tips is one that you might want to check out um, and really digging into some of the pieces that that we uh, put out there for teachers to use in classrooms. And of course in the top right hand corner you're going to see a little magnifying glass and that's a search tool and that's another place that you might use to find the material you're looking for. I'm going to type in tech tools so that I can see all the things that we have curated around digital tech tools. I know that a lot of my teacher friends are asking for um, what are the ways that and platforms available out there that we can use to support um, teaching and learning right now. One of my favorite posts is the 75 digital tools and apps that teachers can, can use to support formative assessment in the classroom. This is a list that we have already curated for you, like the one that Joe posted on uh, those 16 free tools that are geared towards specific content areas right now. This one is a little more general and more for ways that you can collect feedback from students and engage them so that you can uh, elicit evidence of their learning and really see uh, where they are. So let's talk a little bit about 
now that you know how to access the blog, know that now that you know how to use uh, the search feature and you know how to use the categories where things have been tagged, let's talk a little bit about how you curate this content. Uh, so I'm going to share three ways that I like to curate the content um, with the resources that I collect. And the first one I'm going to use is Padlet. Padlet is a free tool. Um, the free version is limited. Uh, I know that you have a, a limited number of Padlets that you can create, but if you're willing to recreate those Padlets over and over, you can continue to use those ones that they offer you. And then if you're willing to um, upgrade, you can have um, unlimited Padlets. But I'm going to come in here. I use the free version. And so I've created um, a Padlet page, Digital Resources, Save Me, and I'm going to name my first column um, Curated Lists. Uh, so what I want to do is go ahead and save some of the lists that um, NWEA has created. So if I go back in here and I'm on our home page with our blog, I want to save Joe's posts on digital resources for uh, reading and math. So if I come in and highlight my toolbar, and I'm gonna copy that address. If I come back into my Padlet, I can click this little add button and I'm gonna say NWEA 16 tools. And hopefully that's gonna jog my memory. And if you notice, there are different kinds of ways that I can add to this post. I can add a picture, I can add um, a link, I can add a document. And since I'm using a link from NWEA's blog, I'm just gonna click the little link button and I'm gonna copy and paste that URL in. I'm gonna click save and now I get a picture with a link to that particular tool. And so I have saved that one. I could come back in and do the same thing again um, if I wanted to look at those three tools that Natalie recommended and I wanna save those. I'm gonna come back to that toolbar, copy and add a new post under my curated list, and I'm gonna say NWEA Natalie's Tools. And again, I'm gonna hit that little link button and paste my URL in. So I'm gonna let this one continue to work and I'll come back over here and check it in just a minute. I'm gonna show you the second um, way that I like to curate uh, some of the resources that I use, and this one is on my Pinterest board. And I have created a board, uh, again, Pinterest is a free tool. I've created a board called Digital Tools. And um, what a lot of people don't know is that I can create a link um, on my board, a pin for my board, just using a link uh, from a website. So I'm gonna create my pin, and I'm gonna use that same um, link from Natalie's page, and I'm gonna use this little picture that reminds me about those three digital tools. So what I did was just copy and paste that uh, site in, select the, the uh, picture that I wanted, and then I'm gonna call this one three digital tools. And now I'm gonna save. And I want this, you're gonna see all my boards now. I want this on my digital tools board. Now, I'm gonna go back to that particular board. And there's my pin that I just created. So we'll do that one more time. And this time we will do it with um, the 16 tools that Joe curated for us. Again, I just copy that link. I'm gonna hit the little plus button. I'm gonna create a pin. Under save from site, I'm gonna click there and I'm gonna paste in the link to Joe's article and I'm gonna select this picture, add my pin, and this one's gonna be called 16 free digital tools. And now I'm going to save. And now I have two pins on this digital tools board. Um, 
where I have saved articles from NWEA's blog. This is one of my favorite ways uh, to curate some of these resources. I can come in and decide different boards for different purposes. And then of course, um, we have the standard way of a Google Doc or a plain old Word document saved on your hard drive. Um, one way that I can come in here is I might say curated lists. That's what we've been working with. And I'm gonna title this one 16 free tools. from the NWEA blog. And since I still have that link saved, if I didn't, I could come back over here and copy and paste that link again. I'm gonna highlight, highlight my 16 free tools. I'm gonna right click on it, and then I'm gonna scroll down and click the link button. And I'm gonna come in here and paste my link in and say apply. And now I have a live link that's living in my document. Uh, that I can click on to go to later. So we've looked at the content from NWEA's blog. We have looked at ways that you can curate the content that you find and you want to keep for future reference. We would love to know how you're curating content. What content have you found that is very beneficial that you think other teachers need access to? And what are some of the tools and resources you're using to curate the content that you find? Be sure to uh, tweet at NWEA or at Brooke Mabry 21 to let us know what tools you're using and how, um, how you're using the blog or the resources that we've posted in this video today. So check out the link below. I'll link directly to the blog in the comments section and uh, be sure to come back and put a comment on this video to let us know any of the things that you would like to see in our future videos or blog posts that you'd like to see us tackle. And I'll be sure that uh, Monica and Joe get uh, those kinds of comments. Thank you so much for tuning in. We hope to see you in our next video in the series, Strengthening Learning Teens in the Virtual World. Until then, Take care.